the laws of any state are broken, a duly authorized organization swings into action. It may be called the state police, state troopers, militia, the rangers, or the highway patrol. These are the stories of the men whose training, skill, and courage have enforced and preserved our state laws. In waging its constant battle against crime, the Highway Patrol, like all law enforcement agencies, is sometimes hampered in emergencies by private citizens. One such emergency occurred last November, involving a hold-up man who had attempted the robbery of a country bank. He was known to the police as Ellis Colton, a brutal, cold-blooded killer. There were rewards totaling $10,000 for information leading to his capture, dead or alive. Colton's car, all right. Take a look down here. Blood. Now, the bank guard said he thought he got him in the leg. Right over there, skid marks. Came in here, then cut right back to the highway. I guess Colton figured we'd only be looking for this car. Get on the horn. Have a couple of boys check this area right away. Right. Just... 
headquarters is sending out two units right away. Well, we're not having any luck. Any word from the roadblocks? Haven't seen him. You know this territory. Where do you think you try and go? Well, that's hard to say. A lot of side roads running off the highway. That'd be the best thing he could do now, take one of the side roads. Have the word spread to the farmers. That could be a great help, especially for a $10,000 reward. 2110 to headquarters. 2110 to headquarters. You been in the barn, Edna? Not since last night. Why? Somebody knocked over that box of tools on the bench, found them all over the floor. Probably the dog. She sometimes goes to sleep in there. Did you look around for her? No, but I'd better. Wouldn't want her to ruin those new preserves of yours. the dog. Somebody's hiding in the barn. Hiding? Must be a tramp. He's hurt. Blood all over the place. Where's my rifle? It's in there. Oh, John. Oh, honey, I'm not going to hurt him. Just want to get him out of the place. Are you sure it's only a tramp? Well, who else could it be? On the news a little while ago, there was a bulletin about an attempted bank hold up at Arverne. So? A gangster named Colton. He got away. He was wounded in the leg. It couldn't be the same guy. They said he's a killer, John. There's a $10,000 reward for him. $10,000. Boy, he must be public enemy number one. Call the highway patrol. Yeah, you bet. Edna? Are you sure about that reward, the amount, I mean? The announcer repeated it a couple of times. Ten thousand dollars. So you to see that kind of money go to somebody else. What are you talking about? Oh, no! You're not thinking of trying for that reward yourself. Why not? I told you why not. He's a killer. You wouldn't have a chance against him. Oh, I wouldn't try it alone. I wouldn't even think about it, but... I had some help. Like George and Vance. They'd be glad to help for a share. I just hope that guy's still in the barn. No, John, no. Forget it. Call the patrol. This is their job. They'll know what to do. Oh, sure. They arrest him, and for that, they collect $10,000. You'd probably get a share for phoning in the information about him, wouldn't you? Like what? Fifty, a hundred bucks? No, thanks. This guy's in my barn. I'm entitled to first crack at him. I won't let you. The money isn't worth it. Isn't it? Even a third of ten thousand dollars is more cash money than we've seen since we got married. I could buy you a lot of things you've been wanting. I don't want anything that bad. Not when you're going after a man who's a killer. There's nothing to worry about. But Vance and George, well, we outnumber him three to one. All we do is arrest him and call in the highway patrol. There's nothing to it. Foolhardy farmers were preparing to break into the barn, Matthews and Officer Larrabee were combing the nearby woods in search of a clue that would lead them to Colton. Anybody live around here? There's a farm up the road, John Albin and his wife, and a couple of other farms a ways up. Colton's hiding out here someplace. Let's see if they've seen anything.
How would you guys like to earn $3,000 a piece? Ah, uh -huh. we're going to hold up a bank or something? Yeah, much better. Strictly lawful. You hear about that escape killer over in Arburn this morning? Colton? Yeah, what about him? He's hiding in my barn. You're kidding. You sure, John? I saw him. He's hiding in the back and he's wounded. Hey, they got a reward out for him. That's what I'm talking about. This $10,000. Now all we got to do is capture him, then call in the highway patrol. You guys with me? Equal shares? I'm not greedy. $3,300 is enough for me for five minutes' work, right, George? Well, now, wait a minute. Didn't the radio say he killed a man? Now, I've got a family to think about. Yeah, but he's wounded. He's probably passed out by now. And don't forget, there's three of us. As far as I'm concerned, John, you and I can do the job together. We'll split the reward 50-50. Uh, now, now, wait a minute, Vance. I didn't say I wouldn't join in. What's your plan? To tell the truth, so far I haven't got one. If we want to keep from getting shot up, we better start thinking about it right now. Then it's agreed. We all go up to the barn and break right in. Let's go. It's a highway patrol. Oh, no. You two stay and watch the barn. I'll go in the house. Come in. Alvin? Mrs. Alvin? This is Mr. Matthews, Mr. and Mrs. Alvin. How do you do, Mr. Matthews? Glad to know you. I'm sorry to bother you people, but we need a little help. We're looking for a guy named Colton. He robbed a bank this afternoon. Yeah, we heard the news. You figures around here? I don't know. That's why we're in the area. Well, uh, Ed and I haven't seen a soul, have we? I've been out in the field working all morning myself. Mind if we take a look around outside? Oh, no, no. Go ahead right ahead. Yeah, thanks. That's your gun? Uh, yeah, Mr. Matthews. I, I thought I'd keep it handy since we heard that radio broadcast. Do me a favor. Don't mess with Colton. You can depend on that. Loaded. These are neighbors of mine, Mr. Matthews. That's Vance Swells and George Bailey. What are you fellas doing around here? Well, uh, Johnny, here as a matter us. of fact, uh, Mr. Matthews, we heard this uh, Colton fellow was loose. Well, Ed and I got a little nervous, so I asked Vance and George to help me look around. I see. You got a gun, too? Figured we'd best be prepared. Look, this Colton guy, don't play around with him. He's killed three people. He wouldn't think anything about killing you. You checked the barn? Oh, there's no sense looking in there. We checked it already, right, fellas? Yeah, we checked every inch of it, Mr. Matthews. I remember what I said. And forget about the guns. Put them away. You bet. Let's go. Tell me, what do you know about these people? I've known them for years. Hard-working, law-abiding. Yeah, they acted kind of funny. How'd they strike you? Yeah, they did. Yeah, they're probably all scared about the possibility of Colton being in the area. I want to check this area some more. Come on, let's start moving. They're driving away. Nice work, John. We finally got him to ourselves. Come on, let's get him. They better wait. They might be looking around. Yeah, I forgot my gun. Now you stand guard here till I get back. I wish the patrol had found him. What, and lose our reward? Now wipe that worry look off your face, Georgie. This is going to be like taking candy from a baby.
More blood in the floorboard. It's Colton's second car, all right? Looks as if we finally got lucky. I'll call for help. We'll cut off this whole area. The bad leg, he's not going to get far here. Yeah, you know you're right. Okay, go ahead. I'll take a look around. I meant every word of it, John. If you go through I with it. I can't this... back out now, Edna. You'll see. Nothing's going to happen. We'll have him out of there and tied up in one minute flat. They're waiting for me. You finally ready? Yeah. Now, the way I figure it, we got to rush him. Now, George, you come from the left. John, you come from the right. I'll head straight for the door and we'll meet there. Well, that'll put us out in the open. He can take a pot shot at any one of us. I figure he's passed out by now. Or maybe he hasn't. Maybe he's watching us right now, ready to blast away. That's a chance we got to take. I think John's right. Now, if you're chicken, George, get out of here. Clear out and go home. All right, let's go. anything? No, not a thing. Had he been in the woods, he'd have left a trail. I didn't find anything. We've got six units on the way. Colton can't be far. Yeah, well, that figures. Cut out around in here someplace. It's the Alban farm out over there. I'm going over and check. You wait for the boys. Spread them out, huh? Right. This isn't enough. We've got to call a doctor. It's not that bad. I'll be okay. I'm going to call a patrol. No. We'll still get him. How? He'll kill all of us. No, he won't. I'll burn the barn down if I have to. That guy Matthews. Here, cover the table. Oh, Mr. Matthews. Everything all right around here? Sure. Why wouldn't it be? I've got to tell you something, Mr. Matthews. You think he's around here? I don't know. Uh, what were we going to say, Mrs. Alvin? Oh, she's glad you're back. She's getting a little nervous. Nervous, nervous about what? Go on. What were we going to say? Just what John said. The men have started to search the woods. The woods, huh? We'll join them in a couple of minutes. What happened to the other guy? Oh, George, he, uh, he went home. Yeah, what are you doing here? Just chewing the fat. Just chewing the fat. We shot you. I'm okay. I'll tell you the truth, Mr. Matthews. Shut up. Man. I won't shut up. Let her tell it. Colton's hiding in our barn. Why didn't you call the police? It was the reward money. They're afraid they won't collect it if your men capture him. All right, I'll tell you what I want you to do. See this window? Keep away from it. We'll take it from here. All right, come on, let's go. Oh, well, Mike, glad you're here. It looked like Colton was going to come out. I told you about these guns. Get out of here, will you? Yes, sir. Thank you. I'll cover you and then you cover me. Colton, come on out. You haven't got a chance. I can't come out. I've got a bad leg. I'm back here on the floor. I right, throw your gun out. It's on the floor. I can't reach it. Come in and get me. I surrender. I won't try anything. I swear it. Just get me to a doctor. I've lost a lot of blood.
you take over. Huh? We heard the shooting. Did you get him? It's Matthews. I'm at the Alban farm. We got Colton. Get an ambulance here right away, will you? Right. Well, forget it's over, Mr. Matthews. Even if you fellas get the reward. The way you walked in that barn, you'd earned it. Let me tell you something, mister. No law enforcement officer ever gets a reward. That's in line of duty. That's our job. Oh, by the way, Mrs. Alban. Can I tell you one thing? You got yourself $10,000 for the information you gave us. Spend it, huh? Don't give it to these guys. Just spend it. Highway Patrol again next week. Until then, remember, if you care to drive, drive with care. This is Bradley Crawford saying, see you next week. any state are broken, the duly authorized organization swings into action. It may be called the state police, state troopers, militia, the rangers, or the highway patrol. These are the stories of the men whose training, skill, and courage have enforced and preserved our state laws. An important function of the highway patrol is to maintain the safety of the road, to prevent accidents causing injury or death. But not all the fatalities on the highway are accidents, though they may appear to be. During harvest time, the patrol encountered an accident that started with a driver looking for a hitchhiker. Thanks. I'm just going to Collinsville. Nothing wrong here. No. No. <laughs> Well, 
was instantaneous. Cause of death was an occipital fracture occurring when the deceased How was... do you spell it, Doc? O-double-C-I-P-I-T-A-L. Means the back of the head. Occurring when the deceased was... The back of the head? Maybe I'm filling out the wrong form. Doc, the guy went through the windshield. Forward. <laughs> Time to check the daily report. I'll be with you in a minute. You got something hot? Looks like a murder, only we're supposed to think it was an accident. All right, let's have it. Car hit a tree. The victim's head went straight forward into the windshield. But he died from a blow on the back of the head. We reconstructed the accident, and it would have been impossible for the victim to have received such a blow in the crash. What else? We figured he was clubbed with something heavy and blunt, maybe a tire iron, then propped behind the wheel of the car, which was crashed, about four and a half miles north of Collinsville. What's his name? We don't know. No driver's license? Yes, he had one. John Curtis. It's been erased and rewritten. It's a pretty good job, too, not quite professional. Let's find out who this guy is. Send his fingerprints to Washington for a make. Ask the lab boys if they can bring this back with the original name and number. Anything else on the body? Well, just this, an ID card from an insurance company. Urban Casualty and Life Assurance. In case of injury, notify William Ferguson. RFD, Box 43, Gardner's Grove. Patrolman Garvey thinks the victim might have been a fruit tramp. Yeah, the highways are crawling with him this time of the year. Why would anyone want to plant a phony identity on a poor fruit picker? Maybe someone wanted to lose his own identity, commit suicide, and live to tell about it. I think the guy that did this homicide is not going to do much telling. Could have murdered him for the usual reasons, revenge, jealousy. If one of those were the motives, why take the trouble to plant a false identity? It's crazy. Ever run across a killer who was normal? This could be the motive. Insurance? Yeah. The killer might have pulled this trick before, too. I see what you mean. Well, I'll tell you what I want you to do. Get me a report on all vehicular fatalities that occurred in the past 12 months that have any similarity to this one. I'll get the file room on it right away. I'm going to take a run down to Gardner's Grove. RFD 43, keep me posted, will Anybody named John Curtis. How about William Ferguson? Afraid I can't help you. It's funny you'd give this address. Well, look here. Guess it's about the biggest unofficial post office in the whole state. How come? Most folks who come here have no permanent homes. What are they, migrants? Yep, fruit pickers. They gotta have some place to get their mail. It's good for your business, too, huh? Sure. Brings them in here. Good for them, good for me. Don't suppose I can remember everybody comes in here for mail. Do me a favor, will you? Take a look and see if there's anything there for Ferguson. Nope. Nothing here. I'll tell you what. If he comes in, have him call this number. Tell him I got news for him. If it is news for him. Hold on. Here he is. Matthew's here. Got a line on the car using the Curtis killing. All right, let's have it. Take this down. DMV ownership, license number 2Y7022, sold 16th of this month by A&B Used Car Company at 10213 Union Avenue, Hartsdale. That's about 30 miles from here. What was the buyer's name? John Curtis. That figures. Thanks. Let's go to Hartsdale. The A and B used car company in Hartsdale was checked out. The owner remembered the sale of the 1938 dark blue convertible, but was not able to describe the buyer. 
3153, what's the 1020 of 2150? 2150, by. 2150, two fatality reports similar to the case you're on in almost every particular. Yeah, I was afraid of that. I'll 1019 in about 30 minutes. Have the reports ready on my desk when I get there. Tell them to keep digging, will you? 10 4 2150. Oh. We better find this character and fast. <laughs> Makes number five. You think it's the insurance angle? Oh, we'll find out. I'm expecting Mr. Banning from the State Underwriters Association. By the way, the lab tests on the victim's clothing showed positive evidence of citric acid stains. Now it's confirmed that he was a fruit picker, just like the others. How are the boys making out in the lab with a driver's license? It's a slow process, restoring erasures, but they expect to have something soon. Good. Is Mr. Matthews in? It's Mr. Banning, Mr. Matthews. Send him right in. It's Banning. I'll stay on this. Okay. Hello, Mr. Banning. Sit down, won't you? Looks like you hit it right in the button, Mr. Matthews. They all had insurance, all four of them. There's been a fifth one turned up since last time I spoke to you. They were all migratory workers, and though they were insured by different firms, they seemed to have one very important thing in common. Well, I bet I know what it is. All four beneficiaries had the same mailing address. Right. Same address, different names. But I'll bet my bottom dollar that all four of those beneficiaries are one and the same party. And you'd win your bet. What kind of policies were they? Life accident. Extra indemnity for death by accident on three of the four. All are what we call open policies. No medical required, no personal appearance necessary. Oh, I see. Just fill out the questionnaire and send it in with a premium. That's about it. Well, let me see if I've got this straight now. It'd be easy for a guy to take out a policy in a phony name. Then arrange identification papers in that name. We'll say like a driver's license. And his next move is to find a victim, a hitchhiker, a migratory worker. One that would answer the description on the questionnaire. Then he kills him in what he hopes to look like an accident. Plants a fake ID card on him, then sits back and waits for the insurance company to send the check. Is that about it? It would seem so. Of course, getting away with it is something else again. Strange that he always picks migratory workers for his victims. Well, a migratory worker has no roots. If he disappears, nobody would care very much. It's different with a guy who works in a store or an office. Mm. This just came off the wire from Washington. He was clean. The Prince or Army. The dead man's name was Ralph Perry. Last known residence was 305 South Scanlon. An address he gave when he applied for veterans' benefits a few months ago. Well, it's a lead. They make the payoff on the Curtis policy yet? The check to William Ferguson is in the mail. Good. Anything else the companies can do to help you? Yeah, I'd like photostats on the last four checks. I'll see that you get them. I'm going to pay a visit to South Scanlon Street. Put a stake out in that RFD number. Highway Patrol. What do you want? Did you at one time have a Ralph Parry living here? Ralph? He ain't in any trouble, is he? When is the last time you saw Parry? Well, he moved out about two... No, it was about three months ago. Went back on the road when they started the crop picking again. You haven't seen him since? Well, he came visiting once a couple of weeks ago on a Sunday. To see you? I think he really came to see Carl. Who's Carl? His cousin, Carl Seward. Seward lives here? In the back room, but he's out right now, working. Where does he work? At the, uh, packing house. He ain't after Carl for anything, are you? I know he's been awful worried lately. What's he worried about? I guess maybe it was the fight that upset his nervous system. The fight? Yeah, him and Ralph. First they was a hollering to beat the cars, and then they were knocking each other all over the place. On a Sunday, too. What was it all about? It was about some insurance money. Carl Seward was the first important lead to turn up. 
As the landlady had said, he was at work at the packing house in an outlying suburb. You got a guy working here named Carl Seward? Please, let me go, let me go. Take it easy, take it easy. Please, let me go. Oh, I'll never do it again. Do what? I mean about the apples. What apples? The ones I sold and kept the money for. I don't know what got into me. I'm no crook. How much money did you get? Buck 85. Are you going to take me in? I'll get back to that. I want to ask you some questions about Ralph Parry. Ralph? That's right. I understand you had a big fight with him. Oh, we were always fighting. You know how it is with kin folks. You fought about insurance money. What was that all about? Oh, Ralph, he, he, uh, he wanted to borrow some money. Said he knew where he could get a good deal on a motorcycle. He's crazy about motorcycles. Me, I, I, I wouldn't give you nothing for one. Go on, go on. Well, I didn't have any money to lend him, so he got sore, that was all. What about the insurance money? Oh, well, I got a, a little life insurance. Not very much. I guess I'm not worth very much. But, well, Ralph, he wanted me to cash it in and, and lend him the money. I told him nothing doing, because I figure when a guy goes, he should leave something behind, even if it's just a little insurance money. Ralph kept insisting, hmm? Yeah. Man, did he get mad. I, I couldn't see out of this eye for a week. But maybe next time I'll get a good shot at him. There's not going to be a next time, kid. Well, we've had a big day. Chase a killer and wind up catching a guy who's been stealing apples. Yeah. It's Matthews. The lab raised the original name on the driver's license. Okay, go on, go on. Henry Willits, the Gardner's Grove address. Don't tell me. RFD 43, I bet. That's it. Okay, we'll take a run out there. Call me if anything breaks, huh? Climb in. That fellow Ferguson ain't shown up yet. Letter here for him, though. Let me see it, will you? Yeah. I think it's from an insurance company. Yeah, it sure is. Put it back in the pigeonhole. Mm -hmm. Come here, will you? I want to show you something. See that guy there with the crop duster? Mm -hmm. That's Patrolman Peterson. If somebody comes with that letter, you get in trouble. Send for him fast. Always was one to cooperate with the law. Hey, tell me, you know a fellow by the name of Henry Willis? Hank Willis? I sure do, mister. Sooner or later, they always come around asking for Hank. What does that mean? He's a bad apple. Bad, clean through. Why, a couple of years ago, he almost killed a fella. Straw boss over at Kingsley's Orange Grove. How come? They got to arguing, and Hank had this claw hammer in his hand, and, well, you can guess the rest. Did you hurt him bad? Sent him to the hospital with a busted shoulder. Might have killed him, only the man sidestepped just in time. Did the man file a complaint? Yep. Judge gave him about a year's time. Might have gotten off easier, except this was the second time up for Hank. What'd he do this time? Maybe too much, maybe nothing. I don't know. You got any idea what part of the state Willis is working in now? Sure. He's right here. Back behind this store building is an alfalfa field. You go across it a quarter of a mile or so until you come to the grove. You'll find him there. Thanks. Be careful, though. Hank Willis is a rough, tough boy. You Hank Willis? What am I suspected of this time? Is it a million dollar stick up? Or has some desperate character been pinching nickels off the newsstand? If you're clean, Willis, you got nothing to worry about. Look, I know I'm clean, but for an ex-con to try to convince the law, that's another matter altogether. Tell me, you got a driver's license? I had one, I lost it. Did you report it lost? No, I've been too busy. Have you got a car? No, I never had a car. Looks like I'm never gonna have one now, the rate I'm going. Unless I just happen to win one in a raffle sometime. Well, why bother with a driver's license, then? Well, it was all part of the course. Besides, I want to know if I was good enough to pass the test like the school said I'd be. Driving school? Yeah. 
I never knew how to handle a car before. I never had a chance to learn. So last winter, I was in Capital City, and I had a few extra bucks in my kick. So you went to driving school. They use good equipment to those schools, don't they? All the latest stuff. Well, sure. They were all brand new, with all the latest gizmos. Look, you wouldn't know where you might have lost your license or who might have found it, would you? No, it must have just slipped out of my wallet. You think somebody might have stolen it from you? And leave all the money? Hey, look, why is my driver's license suddenly such a hot subject? All right, forget it, forget it. It's not important. What was the name of the driving school you went to? The Anderson School of Driving. All right, thanks. You better stick around for a few days with us. We'll probably want to talk to you again. Oh, sure, I'll stick around. So if you can't find anybody else to take this fall, there's always good old reliable ex-con Willis you can grab. Like I said before, if you're clean, you got nothing to worry about. But if you're not, you bought yourself a lot of trouble. Look, call headquarters. Tell them to call the Anderson School of Driving. I want to check in the equipment they use, especially the car that Willis used for lessons. I'll be inside. All right. 2150 to headquarters. All right, Mrs. McLean. Goodbye. Find Hank Willis all right? I found him. Pretty tough character, eh? I've met tougher. It's a nice car you got out there. Is it yours? She will be when she's paid for. Suppose Hank Willis is the fellow you're looking for? I'll know soon enough. Here you are, Chief. Here's the information on Willis you wanted. Hope it's what you're looking for. Well, things are starting to make sense. Time to wrap it up? No, no. This tells us exactly the man we want, but it's not evidence. Won't hold up in court. So we're still with it? Yeah, I'm afraid so. Unless the pressure gets too much for our boy and he makes a break for it or tries to pick up an insurance check. Either way, we got him exactly where we want him. Think he might? I don't know. It's hard enough to predict what a normal person will do. You know something? I think they spotted Peterson. That's why they haven't picked up the check. I'm going to pull him off that stake out. Anything I can do to help Mr. Matthews, be very happy to. Thanks. If anybody comes for that check, let us know right away, will you? Mm. I don't get it. The only thing that info I gave you says is uh, that Willis learned to drive in a car equipped with an automatic shift. That's right, and the car used in the killings were old ones, all hand shifts. Well, that means uh, Willis isn't a killer. That's right. But in the store just now, you said that... I said what I wanted Hutkins to hear, that's all. We know positively that Hutkins is the only man connected with the five murders. And all that in the store just now is an act, huh? That's right. Hutkins is our man, and I think he is. He's going to make his move. He's going to try and make us think Willis is the killer. Come on, let's move, Peterson. Just going to town to pick up some merchandise. Two six six nine to two one five zero. Two one five zero. Two six six nine. Man answering description of Henry Willis seen getting into Hutkins' car and driving off with Hutkins. 2150 to 2669. What is your 1020? 2669. Northbound on Highway 42, a half mile north of Hutkins' store. All right, stay with him. We'll catch up to you. And let's go. There's a man's life at stake. <laughs> Send all units north of Gardner's Grove Township, south on US 42. Units south of Hutkins store are to proceed north. Intercept a green special sedan 1955, license number 2Z332201. Two men in it. Use caution. Repeat. Use caution. One of them is a killer.
2150 to 2669. We're approximately three minutes behind you. Don't lose them. He was trying to kill me, to keep me from telling that it was him who came after that insurance company letter. What's your story? Well, I go into the store after working, same as I do every night, to buy some cigarettes. Uh, he says he's got to drive into town after some goods. Do I want to go along? Maybe taking a movie or something. So I say, OK. We get in the car, and we're driving along. After a while, he says he thinks the front wheel is wobbling. So we pull off the road and stop, and I get out to take a look. The next thing I know, he's taken after me with a tire iron. So I fight back. Now you guys showed up. It was him trying to kill me to keep me from telling. You're lying, Hutkins. You must be crazy. No, you're crazy. Crazy enough to kill five men for their insurance. You were going to make it six because you thought with him dead, the investigation would end. Look here. I don't have to take that from you. You were going to kill Willis exactly like you killed the others. Plant the letter on him, then go back to your store and make it look like a robbery had been committed. Lady, we're going to call me and say somebody broke in and stole the letter. That is so. Nobody can prove I did any of the killings. Nobody. See? Nobody. We've got enough proof. And this, too. When we check your handwriting against the endorsements on the other checks, we'll cinch it. All right, take him away. Next week's case handled by the Highway Patrol is a very exciting one. We hope you'll be with us. Until then, remember, the careless driver isn't driving his car. He's aiming it. This is Bradley Crawford saying, see you next week. Whenever the laws of any state are broken, a duly authorized organization swings into action. It may be called the state police, state troopers, militia, the rangers, or the highway patrol. These are the stories of the men whose training, skill, and courage have enforced and preserved our state laws. and support of American institutions, the peace officer faces many unusual and dangerous situations, not the least of which is the escaped criminal. On August 7th of last year, a statewide alarm went out for Nolan Wilbur, a man who was serving a life sentence for robbery and murder. A desperate man with everything to gain and nothing to lose. I see. Oh, that's quite all right. Thanks very much for calling. What was that? Another false alarm. False alarm's paid off, we'd be millionaires. 
Yeah, I'll call the local radio station. See if they'll put out a bulletin on Wilbur for us. Take another check on the roadblocks. Right. What about the Babcock Junction area? Two units on the way. This is Sergeant Williams, the highway patrol. Could you broadcast a bulletin for us every half hour till we call it off? Good. Now, here it is. Move a couple of more units into the Babcock Junction area. Have them come to the farms and dirt roads in the back area. Wilbur is armed and dangerous. Don't attempt to make a capture. Keep your doors and windows locked. Call the highway patrol. Got it? Good. Thanks a lot. How's he going to get out of that Willow Creek area? Why don't you tell me? Well, we had the whole area sealed off tight as a drum five minutes after we got the call. He couldn't get through those roadblocks. Well, there's another possibility. What's that? Shut up, you don't want to end up in a hearse. Now get in that station. Go, it's me! Go! Go! Ah! I want you to get one thing about straight, lady. There'd be two dead bodies in the station. I wouldn't throw up a list if you consider yourself lucky. Simpson, did you check out the roadblocks? All negative. What about that report from 3220? Uh, he picked up a stolen car, but Nolan Wilbur was not one of the occupants. Well, keep after him. Pull in a few more units and establish secondary blocks in case he tries to get around that main block on foot. Right. I don't have to tie it so tight. Just want to make sure you don't go taking any walks. Fifteen thirty-six. Proceed twenty miles south of Willow Creek. Rendezvous with sixteen twelve to form secondary roadblock. realized that in spite of the new clothes, he was inside a tightening net. He knew the road ahead was blocked. The road behind would lead to capture. His only hope was the hills, which might give safety, but which would certainly present new problems of survival. Highway Patrol. Highway Patrol, Simpson. Uh, hold on just a minute. Mr. Matthews, you better take this. Possible victim of Nolan Wilbur. Thanks. Mr. Matthews. There's a man here. I think he's dead. All right, all right. Take it easy, lady. Let's start from the top. Where are you and what happened? All right, ma'am, now don't you worry. We'll have an officer out there right away. Yeah, thank you. Get your gear. 
Fifteen minutes ago, Wilbur left the service station on 104. That's just south of our roadblock. He was driving a blue convertible. Nora Paul, Abel 308. It's around the whole area. We're going to the service station. Headquarters to 2150. 2150 by. Vehicle stolen by Wilbur abandoned. 19 miles south of Willow Creek. Route 104. Have nearest unit cover the service station. We'll check the abandoned car. 10-4? 10-4. said, drop it. Okay, mister. We each got something in our hands, but what you got makes you the boss. Any food in that truck? Water? Sure is. Say, where'd you come from, anyhow? Just get some food out of that truck and don't ask any questions. I've already killed one man today. And one more is not going to make any difference. Mister, it could make a lot of difference to me. Pull up a chair and I'll serve lunch. Well, here it is. A little further up the road, he'd have met the roadblock. Yeah, he must have spotted it up ahead and decided to dump the car here. Yeah, I'll buy that, but what direction did he take off in? Well, there was a lot less cover south of the road, more highways. Of course, he might have figured we'd decide on the hills and go the other way to cross us up. Yeah, it'd take a week to flush him out of there. Twenty-one fifty to headquarters. Headquarters, bye. Have the helicopter meet me on Route 104, 19 miles south of Willow Creek. It's urgent. 10 4? 10 4. Get in.
demon could hide in there, let alone one man. Yeah, looks like this will have to be a man-to-man -man search. I drop down. We'll cover this area in circles, getting wider every time. We'll cover every inch of the ground around here. $19.36 altogether. It's yours without a struggle. All right, now dig up the rest of it. You're making plenty of money operating this mine or you wouldn't be here. Nobody's been operating that mine for years. It's unsafe. That's what the lumber's for. I'm trying to shore it up so I can work it again. We're gonna have to wait a little while longer because I need that pickup truck. I need the food that's in it and I need you. For what? To drive me out of this territory. The police are after you. You'll never get out of this territory without being caught. Oh yes, I will. Because you're going to tell any cops that we haven't run across that you haven't seen anybody that looks like me. I'm going to be right behind you in that truck with this gun two inches from the back of your neck. And with a bullet that's got your name written all over it. If we don't get by the cops. And suppose we do get by the cops. What happens then? Well, uh, we'll talk about that when the time comes. Now, we uh, of all this junk. I don't want the cops to even think anybody's been here. <laughs> Continuing their helicopter search, Matthews and Williams knew that Nolan Wilbur would not hesitate to strike out at anything that stood in the way of his freedom. Knowing this, a seemingly impossible search had to have a quick ending. But the highway patrol could not know that Nolan Wilbur had already found what he hoped would be his ticket to freedom. We could draw a blank down there. Too many places for a man to hide. All right, quit your stalling. Let's get out of here. That might be the cops looking for me. Put it back out of sight for a few minutes. Into the mine. Come on, move. Go. Oh, maybe a quarter of a mile, but look at this. Don't get me butts bound looking here. They may not go back that far. Let's say you're not worried about my life, but what about yours? Come on, start moving. Look, the least little jar will bring down tons of earth on both of us. It'll be tighter than any cell you've ever been in. I said move, move. <laughs> It's not. Let's take a look around. The car didn't get here by itself. Uh, uh, um. <coughs> I'm hurt bad. You shouldn't have pushed. Shut up and stay alive. You gotta stay alive to get me out of this. I don't see anything out here. How about the mine? I'm with you. Hold it, covers! All right, Wilbur. Come out of there and come out with your hands up. This is me, covers. There's another guy in here with me. There's a big rock laying on him and he's hurt. 
If you don't come in here and get him, he'll die. And if you don't do just what I tell you to do, he'll die a lot quicker. Get it? That's a bluff, Wilbur. And we'll call that bluff in three seconds with tear gas if you don't come out of there. Tell him. Tell him loud. He's right. I'm here. I'm hurt. Help me. Please. Okay, we'll be start talking. Grab your guns at the mouth of the mine where I can see him. And come in here and get the rock over this guy. Apparently no fractures. He's sure lucky this rock wedged against that beam. You're making a sucker play. There's a pilot in that helicopter. He's going to call headquarters. This place is going to be sealed off tighter than a drum. I know you cops work. You won't risk me killing that guy if you can help it. So you'll just have to unseal that drum and let me out of here. Now start lifting. Are you kidding? Take 20 men to move that rock. You can get me out of here, can't you? You gotta get me out of here. Yeah, we're gonna try. Maybe we can run a line from the helicopter. Run around this rock and pull it off him. What we do, we gotta get him to the hospital. If we don't, it's gonna be murder. They hang you for killing one guy just the same as for killing two. You don't need a hostage. Our guns are there by the entrance. Pick them up and you got it made. Yeah, and the minute I stick my nose out of that mine without any protection, the guy in the helicopter starts shooting. You. Go and tell that helicopter take off and drop a line. You stay here. When that copter comes back down, you tell him to land out there in the clearing where I can see him. Now get going. Go ahead, he's the boss. We have that line. We got a man in there under a rock. He's in pretty bad shape. Try to loop this around a rock. See if you can lift it. Think we can manage? We sure give it a try. Listen, when you get through, land right here. We're in trouble. Take that beam up over there. I crossed the top. Okay, go ahead, take it away. Why don't you take it easy, fella? We gotta get him to a hospital. Call up your helicopter. Get in it and get out. If you have any future plans, that is. Well, I got plenty of plans. And they include you, too. Get out there in that clearing where I can see you. And take off and don't come back.
get me a doctor, please. Uh, come on. Come on, let's get it. Oh, oh, no. You're hurting me. You're hurting me. Put me down and let me rest, please. I can't stand it. I can't stand it. Shut up. Be glad you're alive. We're going to need you at the roadblock. Come on. time in my life I've ever been shot at with my own gun. Highway Patrol again next week. Until then, remember, if you care to drive, drive with care. This is Bradley Crawford saying, see you next week. of any state are broken, a duly authorized organization swings into action. It may be called the state police, state troopers, militia, the rangers, or the highway patrol. These are the stories of the men whose training, skill, and courage have enforced and preserved our state laws. any law enforcement agency, the Highway Patrol encounters many unforeseen obstacles in apprehending the criminal who is at large and dangerous to a community and its citizens. Many times it is the citizen himself who unwittingly aids the criminal in his flight from the law. Such was the case when on October 7th, Irv Desmond, having been unsuccessful in his attempt at robbing a drugstore, killed a pharmacist. For four days, Desmond had eluded the patrol. 
Time and again, he had been tracked down. Time and again, he was able to avoid capture due to the unintentional help of a citizen. He had now been traced to the outskirts of the small farming community of Littleton, where Patrolman Norton had discovered the stolen car Desmond had abandoned. There doesn't seem to be anything wrong with the car. Must have figured it was too well known. Yeah, it's still warm. It's hard to figure this guy. Only thing we know is he doesn't like to travel alone. How big is the next town up ahead? It only exists to service the farmers in this area. We can check it out in no time. There's a lot of open country around here. Get on the radio. Have them send two units out as soon as possible if they can spare them. That'll give us more men to flush Desmond out. Now, we're going into town. When we get there, I'll take the left side, you take the right. Okay. Norton, you get to the other side of the town and work in. Notify everybody you see what's going on. Give them a description of Desmond. Right. Highway Patrol. I'm uh, Henry Beckerley, and this is Sam and Ali Wood. How do you do? Have some breakfast? No, thanks. We're looking for a man to kill a pharmacist over in Smithersville. We think he's in this area. Did you hear that, Ellie? A killer here in a little bit. Well, I declare. What makes you think he's in these parts, Mr. Matthews? Yeah, isn't anything around Littleton that would interest him? Well, we've been tracking him for quite a while. We lost him somewhere around here. What's his name? His name is Desmond. He's a tall, good-looking fellow, about 35. You wouldn't take him for a killer at all. I saw a man this morning, Sam, as we came from the farm. No, that was the elderly boy. <laughs> He's always uh, traipsing over someplace and not coming back till the next day. Sure, that was the elderly boy, Ellie. I saw him myself. You know that my wife has seen that boy every day for the past 20 years and still don't recognize him. And you know what? When she sees her daughter's children today, she won't recognize Sam. him. But if we see that killer, Mr. Matthews will sure let you know. Thanks very much. We'd appreciate it. Now, all of you go about your business as usual. But please, be careful. Thanks again. Thank you, sir. south first thing i know when i get out of the car why this patrol fellow comes up and starts asking me and the driver some questions about a killer that's on the loose anybody seen him no he killed a man in smittersville but that's quite some distance away from here he could have taken off in the other direction maybe so i guess it's a pretty tough job tracking down these criminals are you take that young fellow matthews in you a while ago not the least bit excited just as calm as anything and the way he acted, they're not worried at all. They know they're going to get him. Well, I hope so. Where are you from, young man? Southern part of the state, ma'am. On our way up to the city to get a job. You, uh, you folks live around here? Yep. For over 30 years. Better oh. stay around a little longer. You may have some fireworks here in Littleton. Not likely, Henry. They have enough fireworks for the three grandchildren to have. I guess you have at that. My, Ellie, we gotta go. Henry, how much do we owe you? Oh, that'd be for 96 cents. Uh, you wouldn't know of anybody that's heading up toward the city this morning, would you? We're going as far as River Bend. Give you a look that far, if you like. Well, that'd be swell. Sure, young man. You just finish your breakfast, so we'll wait for you outside. Mm. Well, Sooner I get up to the city and get a job, the happier I'll be. There you are. Thanks.
Find anything? No, sir. I checked with everybody I saw clear up to the cutoff. Not a sign of them. McWilliams or Fleming uncover anything? No, not a thing. But they got a lot of territory to cover. Get in your car. Patrol the whole area. Keep in contact with us. He and I will help out McWilliams and Fleming. This hour of the day, the farmers ought to be out in the field and busy. This will give Desmond a chance to hold up in one of their houses, and I don't want that to happen. Go on, take off. Somebody should have spotted Desmond by now. It's been about an hour since we've been to town. Let's check it again. Something nice to know that it's just between you and the soil. Oh, and even in the hard times, we've had our ups and downs. But the good Lord has been mighty good to us. Wouldn't you say, Ellie? Yes, Sam, but Mr. Williams might not be cut out to do farming. Uh, isn't that the road to Medford intersecting up ahead there? Yes, it is. Well, uh, well, maybe I'll take your advice, Mr. Brown. You see, the only farmer in our family is my uncle, and, and he lives up here in, in Medford. Yeah, while I'm in the area, I think I'll go in and talk to him. You people seem very happy. You make a farm and a good woman sound mighty fine. Well, you won't be sorry, my good fellow. Yes, sir. And don't you worry, if you decide to farm, that good woman will come along soon enough. <laughs> well, it certainly has been wonderful meeting both of you. I can't begin to tell you how much I appreciate it. Oh, think nothing of it, son, and good luck to you. And if you're through Littleton sometime, you just look us up. You bet I will. Thanks, Mr. Brown. Thank you. Mrs. Brown? Did you find him? No, not yet. You sure there were no strangers around here this morning? No, only the Browns that were here and that young fellow that you talked to outside. What young fellow? The young fellow that you talked to in the car. He said... Where is he now? Why, he went to... Uh, he went with the Browns to ride to River Bend. It couldn't be that he... What kind of a car were they driving? Why, it was a new green half-ton truck. Sam just got it. Where in River Bend? Why, they were going to visit their daughter. Uh, Mr. Uh, Mr. Matthews, uh, I, I, I didn't... All right, all right. Now just simmer down and answer a few questions, will you? Did you ever see this guy before? No, but he was a nice sort of a looking young fellow and he talked about the killer. It, it never dawned upon me that he could have been the killer. Ella and Sam felt the same way about it. They thought it was just a young fellow passing through. How long ago did they leave? Well, about 20 minutes ago. What's the address in Riverbend? Uh, it's, it's their daughter. Uh, the name is Eldridge. All right, get on the phone. Tell her to go to send another unit to the Eldridge house in Riverbend. Mr. Matthews, I'm sorry. Uh, I, I should have known. You don't think he'll do any harm to Sam and Ella, do you? Well, to tell you the truth, I don't know. Keep your fingers crossed. Herb Desmond had again slipped through a tight net the patrol had set for him. But knowing he would eventually be traced to the Browns, he smartly and smoothly discarded them. You in charge here? What? I said you in charge here. Yeah, what do you want? Well, I saw a sign back there. It said you need day laborers. You don't look much like a day laborer. Well, change your clothes and I will. Oh, I'm big. My hands are strong. All right, I need a pair of hands to help move some concrete brick. You get $12 a day and you'll work. You understand? Good enough. Come on. Have him fill out the papers and then get him some work clothes. This girl will take care of you. Then report to me. And get those reports typed. Nice guy. Would you fill this out, please?
I think he can use you for three days, but one day with him and you'll be ready to leave. Oh, I don't know. You've been kind enough to warn me. That'll make things a lot easier. Funny. You don't seem at all like the, the ordinary day laborer type. Well, there are those days when you've got to eat. <laughs> no, you're right, though. See, I put everything I had into a little business down south. Lost all of it. Now I'm working my way back to the city. Then I'll get a fresh start. Oh, I know what you mean. I took this job so that I could save some money. And I end up working for a man like Grundy. Mm. He's so miserable. Here. John Williams. Mm -hmm. All right, John. You'll find some work clothes in a locker and bath. Here's the key. Thanks. Well, at least with you around, there'll be some pleasantness. Say, uh, if you can provide the car, I can provide the lunch. All right. Good. But I don't understand, Mr. Matthews. He seemed like such a nice, fine young fella, and he did us no harm. Ain't that right, Ellie? Are you sure you got the right fella? Yeah, he's the right man. Do you know why he got off at Medford Junction? He has said he had an uncle up in Medford who farmed. He said he was going to go up there and talk to him. He said we made farming sound pretty good. That's what he said, Mr. Matthews. I guess we're lucky. I mean that he didn't do us any harm. Hey, you sure are. I hope the people we're with now are just as lucky. Thanks very much. Well, let's go. Twenty-one fifty to thirty-eight twenty-two and thirty-eight forty-six. Go ahead, twenty-one fifty. I'm proceeding to intersection, Highway forty-four and Medford Road. Thirty-eight twenty-two, stay on Medford Road to Medford. Thirty-eight forty-six, take opposite direction. Stay in contact. Ten four. Ten four. Okay, Williams, one hour for lunch. Hi. Well, uh, I look like a worker now, don't I? Oh, yes. <laughs> How about our lunch? Well, I can't leave just yet until Mr. Grundy gets back. He watches the office during lunch hour. Oh? Good. Well, uh, that'll give me a chance to change my clothes and freshen up a bit. Uh, where's your car? I'll meet you there. It's the brown convertible just in back of the office. Good. I'll see you in a few minutes. All right. Did you get those reports typed up yet? No, sir. We'll get them typed up as soon as you get back from lunch. Yes, Mr. Grundy. I will. Hi. All set? Yes. So good to get out of here, even if it's only for an hour. <laughs> I know what you mean. <laughs> Uh-oh. I left my wallet back in the locker room. Look, why don't you drive the car around? I'll only be back in a minute, all right? All right. Good. What do you want, Williams? Okay, Mr. Big Guy. Stop eating long enough to open that safe. Just who do you think you're... Come on, don't give me any of your lip. Open that safe before I blow a hole in your stomach as big as the one in your head. Come on, move! Hurry up! to keep you waiting. A little restaurant down the street. What do we say we eat down there? All right. Good.
The patrol knew only that Desmond was last seen at the Medford Road, Highway 44 intersection. Matthews and Sergeant Corey began a systematic search of the vicinity for any sign of Desmond. General stores, gas stations, all buildings and people in the area were checked out. Nothing. That was a smart move on Desmond's part, losing the Browns before they got to the destination, but why this area? There's got to be a half a dozen crossroads between here and Middle. What we know about Desmond, he doesn't do anything without a reason. Well, we know he'll want a car and money. Seeing as it's Desmond, he'll want a companion. He killed the pharmacist for money, didn't get any. As far as we know, up to now, he hasn't even picked up a thin dime. What do you say we take a look down the highway? Maybe something caught his eye. Might catch ours. Might be it. Could give him everything he needs. Cash here, it's gone now. What happened? Williams, he slugged me, took the cash. That gun had got me in the jaw and it killed me. Are you all right? I think so, it got me in the neck. Take a look around outside. Right. What's your name? Grundy, I, I'm the foreman here. How long ago did this happen? About 20 minutes ago. This guy that slugged you, you say his name was Williams? Yeah, took the petty cash, about $80. I only hired him this morning. Didn't you look at his identification before you hired him? No, I needed a pair of strong hands. This guy, was he tall, good-looking, about 35? Yeah, that's the guy. Wish I had my hands on him right now. You got any idea where he went? No. The girl that works for me. She was kind of taken up with him. What girl? Keith. Susan Keith. Has she got a car? Yeah, she's got a car. What kind? A uh, convertible, a brown one. Not a sign of him. I'll make a note. Another ACB on Desmond. Have the fellows cover all points in this area. He might be traveling with a gal in a brown convertible. Describe her, will he? Well, about 25, 26. Oh, come on, Mr. Grundy. You've got to do better than that. Well, brown hair, about five foot four or five, kind of silly looking. You can have a doctor take a look at that neck of yours. I'll send an officer back to get a full report, and next time, look out for who you hire. Desmond's got everything he needs, car, money, and a girlfriend. He's probably headed back for the city. If you don't pick him up before he gets there, we'll lose him again. Come on, let's roll. forward to seeing Grundy again, huh? Let's not talk about him. Not just yet, anyway. We still have a few minutes. You're a swell girl, Susan. I wish we'd met some other place. Some other place? Why some other place? You said it this morning. After just one day with Grundy, I've had enough. I can't go back there, Susan. It isn't worth $12 a day to, to put up with that man. No, I'd be better off in the city, taking my chances. Until I get back on my feet again. But you need the money, John. Twelve dollars? Sure. It'll take care of me for a couple of days, but... I'd rather starve than put up with Grundy. 
The only trouble is, well, you've been awfully nice to me, Susan. Well, I don't even like the idea of your working for him. You know, you'd be better off in the city, too. But you're an intelligent girl, Susan. Why, you wouldn't have any trouble at all getting a job. And with nice people. Why don't you come with me, Susan? Come on, I have friends. Won't you come with me? Oh, I'd like to, John. But I can't just leave my job without giving some kind of a notice or something. That might be it. Hey, you, mister. Get over here. Come on. Thanks. Take that apron off. Come on, move, I said. Now get this and get it straight because your lives depend on What's it. What's all this about? Shut up. Now listen, in just a few minutes, there's going to be a cop coming in here. He's going to ask you some questions. And when he does, you better give him the right answers. Now her name is Susan Keith, and she works for the Concrete Brick Company. So do you, mister. You're a day laborer, and the two of you are just about for lunch. Now, if he asks you anything about a John Williams, all you know is that he works at the company with you, but you haven't seen him since lunch. Now sit down and shut up. This gun's going to be on you all the time, and I hope you two are good actors. This is it, all right. Registered to Susan Keith. We can't be sure the gal's with him. I'll go in the front way. You go in the back. Keep me covered. You on the move. Stand up. Hands behind your head. Come on. You Susan Kidd? Yes. yes, I am. What's the trouble? What's your name? Smith. Charles Smith. What's the matter? You work at the brick company, too? Yeah, yeah, yeah. I'm a day laborer. How long have you been there? Uh, about three weeks. You know a man by the name of John Williams? Yes. Yes, he works there, too. He's a day laborer. He just started this morning. All right, you can put your hands down. When's the last time you saw him? Just before we came to lunch. You haven't seen him since? All right, thanks very much. You can sit down now. All right, Johnson, take him. Send for the evidence. How'd you know which one? Oh, they were too nervous. He said he was a laborer. Look at his face. He's as pale as a ghost. I don't understand. Well, he was wanted for murder. Murder? Oh, but he was... Yeah, sure, I know. He seemed like such a nice guy. Next week's Highway Patrol story is a very unusual one. I hope you'll be with us. Until then, remember, it isn't the car that kills, it's the driver. This is Bradley Crawford saying, see you next week. any state are broken, the duly authorized organization swings into action. It may be called the state police, state troopers, militia, the rangers, or the highway patrol. These are the stories of the men whose training, skill, and courage have enforced and preserved our state laws. Breaking traffic laws comprise the largest single violation for the highway patrol. Many times the driver is an ordinary man who, by his carelessness, is the cause of a tragedy. 
But there are some occasions when the man behind the wheel is more than a careless driver. Such was the case when, on November 7th, Officer Dillon was in pursuit of a speedster named Eddie Beekman. Patrol headquarters received Officer Dillon's call and an ambulance was on its way to the scene of the accident. At 3280, I'm holding driver and companion. Request aid at the scene. I'm on my way. 10-4? 10-4. Officer Dillon's request for help resulted from the actions of the father, John Weber, who remained at the scene of the accident. Weber insisted on dealing with the driver personally. What is it? Now, this is Mr. Weber, father of the child. Five but... minutes with that guy. That's all I ask. That won't help your child any, Mr. Weber. Maybe not, but it'll help a lot of other children. You live around here, Mr. Weber? Yeah, right there. There's nothing you can do here. It's criminal the way he was traveling. So wonder she wasn't killed. I know. Would you please go to the hospital? Your wife needs you. Yeah, yeah, you're right. We'll be in touch with you. What's that? organization swings into action. It may be called the state police, state troopers, militia, the rangers, or the highway patrol. These are the stories of the men whose training, skill, and courage have enforced and preserved our state law. it rich. Some do it with a prospector's pick, some with a gun. But Asa McQueen's strike on March 14th was an exception. It was an unusual discovery. Paper. But a special kind of paper. Large denomination bills in United States currency. Did you hear about the Cronins? Mary Sims tells me You told me, me that, that last time you were in. And about the Bruners, too. Why? It's Asa McQueen. Mr. Deadbeat himself. Coming here for credit? No more credit for him. Told him that last time he was in. Hello, beautiful. Now, I told you once, Asa. You want money? Let's see if I've got a dime. I struck it. Look there, Charlie. Hundred dollar bills. Oh. Now, you act respectful. You're talking to a rich man. How much do I owe you, Charlie, my boy? One hundred? We'll take another. I'm doing some buying today. Thank you, sir. Thank you. <laughs> Just name anything you want. Oh. I knew you'd hit it someday, Asa. I told everybody that you would... Now, you run down and get my landlady. Bring Maggie up here. Toot sweet. I always had good words for you, Asa. Just you ask Charlie. What was it, Asa? Gold strike? You sell out? Between old friends. Come on, Asa. Where was it? Will you tell my landlady to wait here? I'm going down to the bank and pay off my loan. Uh, yes, Mrs. Brown. That escrow should be through next week. Hang up, hang up. The important customers here. Oh, may I call you back, Miss Brown? Thank you. 
Mr. Sparrow. I think I have a small loan here, about $300. Why, yes, uh, Ace, just a moment. I'll call and get the paper for the oh, correct amount. Oh, you don't amount. have to bother. I know it's only 300 And if there's anything left, you can keep it yourself. For past favors to Ace and McQueen. Uh, Ace, where'd you get all this money? How much have you there? Well, there's are plenty here and plenty more where this came from. Where I got it is my little secret. But I'll give you a tip. I haven't been digging those hills for nothing all these years. But you mine for gold, not for currency. Have you made a strike and sold out for cash? Well, let's say I made a strike and it resulted in cash. Mark may paid off on the books, will you? Uh, just a minute, Asa. You're carrying a lot of money. Won't you let me deposit it for you? Ed Dunn, you helped me in the past. And later on, I may let you do all my banking for me. But right now, I want to keep my money. Where I can feel it and see it and spend it wherever I want. Uh, Asa, wait! Listed as stolen only. A dark green coupe. Right rear window broken. Highway Patrol, Matthews. All right, hold on a second, will you? Who's this talking? E. L. Dunn. Manager, Folkston Bank. All right, go ahead, please. All right, get me the Acme file, will you? Right away, it's right on top. Say they're all $100 bills? Let me have the serial numbers. Yeah. Yeah, that's right, they all match. Who brought the money in? Asa McQueen, what's your standing in Folkestone? Why don't you keep it quiet? I'll be there in about 20 minutes. Thanks. Contact the FBI. Tell them some of the Acme money showed up in Folkestone. Yes, sir. Got a lead? He's a prospect here, but I don't think he's a suspect. We have four leads. Here they are. Any one of them in Folkestone, we're off and running. Let's go. This is the Highway Patrol, District 12. We have a report on the serial numbers of the $100 bills taken in the Acme armed car robbery on June the 17th. with me. If that fits, I'll get you some more. Oh, this one's a plenty. I'm only your landlady. I'll buy you a dozen dresses. Ace and McQueen don't forget who fed him when he was hungry, nursed him when he's sick, and I got some plans if you mind your P's and Q's, old woman. Don't you call me old woman, you old dog, you. Rich old dog. <laughs> and there's more where this came from. You're going awful fast. Are you sure of your ground? I found what I found on my claim. My own property. I spent 40 years of thirst and aches and blisters. I worked them hills hard. And now they paid me what they owe me. I ain't saying you don't deserve it. I'm saying be careful. Why, Meg? Oh, don't think I got designs on you because you've got money in your pocket. It's just that, well, a woman gets used to even a mangy old cur dog hanging around. <laughs> I might buy you a collar for that old dog. Huh. Think it over, woman. Mr. Dunn, I'm Dan Matthews, Highway Patrol. How do you do? How are you, sir? One of my boys is checking with your tellers. I hope you don't mind. No, not at all. But Asa didn't talk to a teller. He brought the money directly to me. There are the bill. Oh, thank you. Yeah, that's part of the armor car job, all right. How long have you known McQueen? Oh, about 20 years, I guess. He was here when I came with the bank. 
Has he ever had this kind of money before? <laughs> Mr. Matthews, the only time that I ever knew Asa to have a couple of hundred dollars in a lump sum was right after he'd come in and borrowed it from the bank. He has nothing. Well, he struck something big this time. How did he explain the hundred dollar bills instead of gold? Nothing. He seemed very excited and very evasive. He left the money on the desk and practically ran out of the office. I got to wondering. So I checked these bills against the stolen currency list and then I called your office. Tell me, has McQueen been away for any length of time in the past month? Oh, he goes up into the hills frequently for long periods. Look, these bills are stolen and Ace is carrying a lot more of them but I'm positive that he's not involved in any robbery. Well, I can't be as positive as you are. Our armored car was held up. Those bills are part of the loot. McQueen brought him to you. I think that involves him just a little, don't you? Mr. Dunn, take a look at these. You seen these men around, folks? All strange faces to me. Do you know where McQueen lives? Yes, he lives at Maggie's boarding house when he's in town. It's a few blocks down the street, you can't miss it. Oh, by the way, I had my office call the FBI, I gave them your name. They're going to take it from here as far as the money's concerned. You'll find McQueen an interesting old fellow, Mr. Matthews. Yeah, if we find him, I'm sure he's going to be interesting. Thanks very much, Mr. Dunn. It's quite all right. The location of currency bearing serial numbers listed as stolen is often the first step in solving large-scale robberies. But mere possession of such currency is no crime. It must be traced to the criminal. However, in a small town, news travels fast, and the criminal is given valuable time in which to hide his tracks and avoid capture. Seven? Yes. Highway Patrol. Oh, come in, please. Thank you. We hear that Asa McQueen lives here. Mm, not here right now. I left him down at Charlie's eating place. Expect him back very soon? Mm, hard to say. He's celebrating. Is anything wrong? Have you seen any of these men around Folkestone lately? <laughs> this is probably silly, but... This looks something like Jesse's star border. The Osborne boy. First time he's been back to Foston since... Hmm, must have been 1938 when he left. And Jesse says he just sits in his room there. Brownie Osborne. Mr. Armored Truck himself. Thank you very much, Miss Evans. Oh, you're welcome. I think Brownie's working with McQueen. No, the way he's spending that money, he must have stumbled over it. Could be fatal. Yeah. Let's pick up McQueen. I don't want Brownie to get to him first. The police were here looking for you. The police? Yes, and I know why they were here, Asa. It wasn't because you made a plain, ordinary mining strike. All right, I found the money. Tin box crammed with it. But I found it hidden on my legal registered claim, and it's mine. Well, why don't you tell the police that? Oh, no. Them hills paid me off for 40 years of looking. And no fancy talk's gonna get it away from me. Where are you going, Asa? I'm going down to the claim and pick up the rest of the money. Then I'm going where they can't find me. I'm going to live in style, old woman. I might even send for you. I like it here. Go ahead. Have it your way. Oh, he's a fine man. First thing off, he asked me to fetch his landlady. Keeping a rooming house myself, that strikes me a home, don't you think? Mm-hmm, mm-hmm, yes. I have a good notion to invite him to stay here. 
Nothing against Maggie, understand. But this is nicer. What kind of a dump is this? For ten bucks a week, I gotta listen to your yakety yak. I'll call you back later. Tempa, Tempa. We've got something to be excited about in your old hometown today. Yeah, what happened? An airplane flyover? Oh, no, indeed. One of our men discovered a mine. Well, bully for Folkestone. I saw him myself, just as he came into town. Hundred dollar bills. New ones, a whole fistful of them. You see notes? Hmm? Who? Come on, who? Asa McQueen, old Asa. Lives over at Maggie's. He sold his find, huh? Is that where he got the money? He's very mysterious about the whole thing. No one knows where it is, what kind of ore he struck. Nothing. Yeah. I've been thinking of doing a little prospecting myself. Maybe I ought to talk to him. Ace has gone back up to his find, and nobody knows where it is. that there is more to robbery than the mere taking of the valuables. If the property is identifiable, it must be either transported to a distant jurisdiction or concealed until the crime is forgotten. However remote and clever the hiding place, it is sometimes discovered. And there is no criminal more vicious than the one who is protecting the proceeds of his illegal labor. The highway patrol did not find Brownie Osborne at Jesse's boarding house. Miss Fry, Jesse Fry? Yes, I'm Jesse. Are you looking for a room? No, no, I'm Dan Matthews, Highway Patrol. I'd like to ask you a few questions. Highway Patrol? What's wrong? I haven't done anything. It's not about you, Miss Fry. May I come in? Yes, please do. My goodness. So much excitement in one day. First Asa McQueen, and now you. That's it. You're looking for Asa McQueen. I knew when I saw him this morning with those hundred dollar bills, he couldn't have come by them honestly. And I said to myself... Would you mind answering a few questions for me? But of course not. Won't you sit down? Oh, no, thank you. That's all right. Now, what do you want to know about Asa? Well, we're not interested in Asa McQueen at the moment. I'd like to know if you have a boarder here with the name of Osborne, Brownie Osborne. Yes. He's been here a few weeks now. A strange man, Mr. Matthews. Is this him? Yes, uh, but he looks older now. Is he here? Not now. I heard him go. You always hear that boy go, slamming doors all the time, shouting to people to keep quiet. Not a good boy, but an unhappy boy, Mr. Matthews. Yeah, I can well imagine. You know where he went? No. Well, he did say something about doing some prospecting, probably because Asa struck it rich. I'll bet that Osborne boy's in trouble. That's why you're here. Am I right, Mr. Matthews? Somebody might be in trouble. Now, if Osborne comes back, I want you to leave the house without his knowing it and call the highway patrol right away. I certainly will, Mr. Matthews. Goodbye. Goodbye, and thanks very much. I must call Elsie right away. I don't know where he is, and what's more, I don't care. Any hint at all where this claim might be? He'll find out there's more to piece of soul than eating and dressing fancy. You're sure you have no idea where the claim is? Why are you folks so interested in Asa? We checked Jesse's boarding house. Osborne's not there. We think he's looking for McQueen. We also think McQueen stumbled on some of the money from the robbery, $90,000 of it. The man that stole it killed to get it. He's not adverse to killing to keep it. But not Asa. Why don't you catch that Osborne boy? Miss Hammond, there's a thousand square miles of mountain up there. I don't know where the claim is. I never meddled in Asa's business. It's just a claim. His claim? Is it recorded? Yes. He made a point of that. On the radio right now. County seat claims office. County mining claims file revealed that Asa McQueen had registered a location in the Devil's Creek Canyon area two years before. A check with patrol headquarters showed no units deployed in the vicinity. You've got four possibles whose M.O. fits the armored car job, right? That's right. It's been nearly nine months since the bag robbery. It doesn't seem likely they'd sit around a town like Folkestone that long. Yeah, that's the trouble. Robbery took place a long ways from Folkestone. 
Now, the heist man wouldn't figure we'd look for him in a small town. But once he gets to Folkestone, a small town like this, he'd attract attention. Unless he tried to prove himself legitimate. You check those points on the map carefully. I wish one of us knew this country better. Well, the map's pretty clear. I don't think we'll have any trouble. I wish we could say the same for the prospector. If Osborne is after him, well, the poor old guy probably went back for his money. He's going to wind up with a back full of lead. Maybe Osborne didn't take out after him. Maybe he left town. After waiting this long for the money? For the prospector's sake, I hope you're right. East, if the claim marker is accurate. Arsenal, do you hear me? Arsenal, hold your fire. Sounds like the shot came from over there. Go on. There's the old man. Rifle fire. Look out, he doesn't pick us off. The old man moves, he's still alive. Let's see if we can make it to him. Who are you kidding, cops? I got you at range. It's just late. See what you can do for him. Smart, aren't you? Where are you going from there? Seen better cover myself. We're not going to do any good when we get within pistol range. He's got a lot of ammo too. How's he doing? He needs attention bad. He's out of sight. We'll be outflanked any minute. He'll keep moving back and forth. It's just a matter of time till he gets a clear shot at us. Which angle will flank us from next? Let me have your six inch. <laughs> Way 
out of range. I'll try it again. About five feet high and two feet upwind. Close. Lucky. This range can go three feet either side. Well, we can drop one on him. Good dreamer. At least we got him to pull his head in for a second. All right, reload. Look, you see if you can pin him down. I'll try and get within pistol range. Too risky. If my first shot doesn't make him duck, he'll pick you off. What are we going to do, wait for the cavalry to come and rescue us? No, aim five over and two up. Correct as you see him hit. Look, why don't you cover me? I'm younger, maybe faster. I'm old enough to be scared. That makes me just as fast. Go ahead. Stuff. I owe more money than I ever pay. I don't think they'll press you for the few hundred you spent. Seek, and you shall find. I've done my seeking, mister. Where's my find? Well, that all depends on what a man's looking for. Bullet in my leg? My age, I can't make it back to the hills anymore. I gotta stay in Folkestone. Well, why don't you look there? Folkestone? Mm -hmm. Yeah. <laughs> I might register my next claim there. See the highway patrol in action again next week. Until then, remember, leave blood at the Red Cross, not on the highway. This is Roderick Crawford saying see you next week. any state are broken, the duly authorized organization swings into action. It may be called the state police, state troopers, militia, the rangers, or the highway patrol. These are the stories of the men whose training, skill, and courage have enforced and preserved our state laws. Thousands of felonies handled yearly by the highway patrol, the crime of first-degree murder is least frequently encountered. When a murder has been committed, it is usually an immediate consequence of another felony, such as armed robbery, and the motive for the killing is obvious. The patrol's job is more difficult when the murder has been committed by the criminal whose motive is just as obvious, but not as ordinary. The man who shoots in cold blood people he has never met. The professional hired killer. On the morning of May 7th, such a man visited Chatsworth. He had arranged for a rented car, and immediately upon his arrival, he picked up the car and headed directly for the Merlin Ranch. There, he hoped to find the two men he was hired to kill, the Santel brothers. 
I'll see you later, George. Well, I didn't know this was a holiday. I just declared one about a half hour ago. Shirley has the afternoon off, huh? Yeah. You don't mind, do you, George? She's only getting one day off a week now. No, I don't mind. It's serious, isn't it, kid? What makes you think so? Well, it isn't too tough for one brother to figure out what the other's thinking of. Uh, I guess it does tell, but why shouldn't it? No reason. Well, remember, we've got a few weeks to go yet. And as far as anyone is concerned, and that goes for the girl too, Tony, our name is Merlin. Okay, okay, I understand. Are you George Merlin? Yes, I'm George Merlin. Where's your brother? He's out for the day. When will he be back? I don't know. Look, Mr. Mr.'s good enough. What do you want? From you? Nothing. I've just got a job to do. Go on working if you like. We'll wait for your brother. But you've never seen me before. You don't even know who I am. That's right. It's best this way. What's Lane paid you? We'll just wait for your brother. Fifteen thousand? Twenty thousand? I'll give you twenty-five. Then I'd be in your shoes. You mean? I mean there's no way out for you or your brother. Go ahead, work. It'll take your mind off it. patrol and informed them he had found George Merlin murdered. Patrol headquarters dispatched an ambulance and a coroner to the scene and quickly relayed the call to Officer Morse, who was the nearest unit to the Merlin Ranch. You Stanley Hollis? Yeah, yeah, he's back here. started his search for Tony Santel.
3280 to headquarters. Headquarters by? I'm at the Merlin Ranch. Put out an APB for the victim's younger brother, Tony Merlin. Height, six feet, black hair. I'm going in the ranch house now to see what I can pick up. Thirty-two eighty to headquarters. Go ahead, thirty-two eighty. Let me talk to Matthews. One moment. Thirty-two eighty wants to talk to you. Thanks. Matthews. Might have a lead in this Merlin homicide. Found correspondence in the house addressed to George and Anthony Santel. George Merlin is the victim. Tony Merlin is his brother and co-owner of the ranch. Correspondence indicate the real name might be Santel. Where the car is what it's come from? Chicago. Same sender, William Bernard, 475 Michigan Boulevard. 475 Michigan. All right, I'll teletype Chicago. What about the younger brother? Haven't located him yet. Put out an APB on him a few minutes ago. Keep checking the house. 10 4. This is Matthews. Teletype of Chicago Police. I want to make a George and Anthony Santel. George Santel's been murdered. Motive not established. The only suspect we have is a younger brother. They've been in touch with... Hold on for a second. Uh, William Bernard, 473 Michigan Boulevard, your city. You got it? All right. Oh, Sergeant, this is Matthews. Get me a rundown on the Merlin brothers. Their real name might be Santel. Find out how long they've been in Chatsworth, what places they hang out. You know the usual stuff. That's it, yeah. I'm going to chat with Keep me posted. Right. Good things or bad? It means you're late. How do you like it? I spend the last hour getting a picnic basket ready and I get a critical greeting. Don't look at me for sympathy. Well, I'm working the rest of the afternoon. You two be enjoying a picnic and saying sweet nothings to each other. Come on, problem child. Let's get the picnic started while the food's still fresh. The killer's perseverance was paying off. After a painstaking inquiry of the stores and shops in Chatsworth, he had learned that Tony Merlin, as he was known there, was going with a girl who worked at the Chatsworth Dry Cleaners, and that Tony had been in town that morning. The killer continued on Tony's trail with but one purpose, to finish the job for which he had been paid. After that, he was free to return the rented car and leave on the next train. Fingerprints were of no concern. He had as yet no criminal record. A valuable asset in his profession. He headed for the cleaning establishment. Hello. Are you Shirley Conway? No, she's off the rest of the day. Oh, my name's Hudson. I'm a friend of Tony Merlin's. Just passing through and stopped by the ranch. George said that uh, he might be with her. As a matter of fact, he is. They both just left here a few minutes ago. They went on a picnic, but they'll be back this evening. Oh, what a shame. Can't stay long. Would like to say hello. Uh, it's been a few years since I saw Tony. Uh, do you have any idea where they went on their picnic? This is only a little town, mister. There's only one decent place for a picnic. Oh? Where's that? About five miles up the highway. There's a little park off to the left, just before you reach the Hayden Junction. Oh, thank you very much. It'll give me a chance to surprise him. Everybody's going on a picnic. How lucky can you get? Yes. Yes, well, thanks again. Twenty-one fifty to thirty-two eighty. Go 
Go ahead, 2150. Did the brother show yet? No, but I found enough in the way of correspondence and legal papers to establish definitely that the name is Santel and not Merlin. I'd stay at the ranch. I'll be in Chatsworth. Keep in touch. 10 4. Headquarters to 2150. 2150 by. Teletype and Chicago Police. Santel Brothers to appear as witnesses for the state against Sam Lane. Big racketeer from that city. When's the trial come up? Three weeks from today. You don't think... Somebody's out to kill Tony Santel, too, if he isn't dead already. The killer's job was almost completed. Missing Tony Santel at the cleaning shop had been a good break. Killing him in an isolated picnic area was going to be much less of a problem than it would have been in town. <laughs> you think I'll make a good rancher's wife? Oh, it'll probably take a long time, but you'll eventually struggle through. <laughs> <laughs> I lost my appetite. Give me this. Now kiss me. Dan Matthews soon learned that someone else had been looking for Tony Santel, a man in a blue suit. He also learned that Tony had purchased provisions for a picnic, a picnic which must include Tony's girl, Shirley Conway. Matthews put out another APB on Tony Merlin, adding that he might be in the girl's company. A check of the girl's home had negative results. Racing against time, Matthews headed for the cleaning shop, hoping to find Tony Merlin before the killer did. Shirley Conway? No. I'm Matthews, Highway Patrol. Well, Shirley's off the rest of the day. What's it all about? Was she with a Tony Merlin? Why, yes. You know, you're the second person that's been looking for her. Where'd they go? They went on a picnic. Where? Probably at the park, just before you reached the Hayden Junction. How long ago did the other guy leave you? <laughs> Not more than half an hour. Describe him. About 40, tall, on the thin side. What kind of clothes was he wearing? Blue suit, white shirt. Is there some kind of trouble going on? Could be. Thanks very much. But... Merlin? Yes? I'd like to talk to you alone for a few minutes. Who are you? What do you want? That doesn't make any difference. I think you better tell your girlfriend you have some business with me. But I don't have any business with you. Suit yourself. She's your girl. Introduce me as Mr. Hudson and uh, make it convincing to her and to me. business wait? It's kind of urgent, Miss Conway. You take the car back to town, honey, and I'll see you a little later. All right. Nice meeting you, Mr. Hudson.
All right, mister. You drive. Look, whoever you are, you've never seen me before. You can't just kill a man in cold blood. Drive. What have you got against me? I said drive. I don't know what Lane's paying you, but I'll pay more. Do you want me to go back and get your girlfriend? Then you better drive, mister. Conway? Yes, sir. Where's Merlin? He left with a stranger. I was just going for help. Well, describe him. What kind of clothes was he wearing? Oh, I don't know. Average-looking guy. He was wearing a blue suit. What about the car? A tan convertible. License number uh, uh, KHE-461. KHE-461. Mm -hmm. They took the Hayden Road. Thanks very much. Okay. Matthews immediately notified headquarters to direct the nearest unit to the Ferndale Highway to establish a roadblock three miles from Matthews' position, figuring the killer and Santel could not be farther away than that distance. All right, get out. Look, tell Lane I won't testify. I'll give him any assurance he wants. Too late for that. I'm his assurance now. But if you'd just talk to my brother and I together, I'm sure we could work this thing out. Your brother's all talked out, mister. I think so. Come on, let's go. Can you make it all right? Yeah, I think so. All right, help in. 2150 to headquarters. Go ahead. Located Santel. He's on the Hayden Highway. That's about six miles out of Chatsworth. Send an ambulance to another unit. Kill us still at large. 10-4? 10-4. Hayden. 
Matthews, Highway Patrol. See that bus? There's a guy on it. Can you pass it? Yes, sir. Hop in. Take off. proceeded with caution. His problem was to apprehend the killer without endangering the lives of the other bus passengers. The problem was further complicated by the fact that there were two men wearing blue suits. Matthews knew that the suspect in the forward section of the bus could see through the rear view mirror. Any activity would also be seen by the other suspect seated in the rear of the bus. To accost the wrong man would be a mistake, probably a fatal mistake. Matthews had to be certain. Did you let me have a schedule? Thanks. You don't even know me. You're in the same spot the Santos were in. Slide over. See the highway patrol in action again next week. Until then, remember, leave your blood at the Red Cross, not on the highway. This is Roderick Crawford saying, see you next week. state are broken, a duly authorized organization swings into action. It may be called the state police, state troopers, militia, the rangers, or the highway patrol. These are the stories of the men whose training, skill, and courage have enforced and preserved our state laws. crime in which the highway patrol is involved takes place in a car or on a highway. On the 7th of November, a case began when a forest ranger sighted a small airplane flying at a dangerously low altitude over the Ridgeway State Forest area and alerted the highway patrol for possible emergency aid. Attention all units. 
Ranger reports airplane trying to make forced landing on fire break adjacent to Eagle Rock in vicinity Ridgeway Forest. 2240, take the call. Ambulance on the way. 2150 to headquarters. I'm right close to there. I'll take the call. 10-4. Get in, Barney. Three or four hundred yards off that way. Probably crashed or landed by now. Except this plane down here had to know what he was doing. Yeah, they want to do it real bad, too. It's a light plane. Either took off or refueled just a few hours from here. Check the CAA number, then check airways for a flight plan. Look around inside, see if you can find anything that will show who owns this crate, will you? Right. Did you find anything? No. Why would anybody want to put a plane down in a place like this? Well, let's find out who. Maybe that'll tell us why. Oh, by the way, where did the forest ranger call from? Oh, someplace near here. Headquarters said he'd meet us here. Did you take a look over that way. I'll go over here. Keep within earshot. Right. Hey, Barney, come here. Dead, huh? Yeah. Hard blow on the back of the head, something heavy. Call headquarters, get a couple of units up here. Bring back your area map, I'll wait for you. Right. Twenty-one fifty to headquarters. Go ahead, twenty-one fifty. The ranger's dead. Notify the car in his office. Location, Eagle Rock. Occupant of plane missing. Request to units to help cover area. Further request. We want a 1028 and a 29 on a plane. CAA registration, Nora 3534 Charlie. That's Nora 3534 Charlie. Got some dope on the plane. Registered to Harry Barlow. No make on it. The Harry Barlow? Yeah. Plane took off this morning from City Airport. Flight plans for Barlow's ranch at Westport. Westport? That's about 150 miles from here. Who was on the plane? Barlow, his wife, and a private pilot named Steve Wesson. It's Barlow. He's uh, mixed up with the rackets, isn't he? Yeah, the numbers. I never heard of him connected with anything rough, though. Well, you have now. Figure it out. Plane lands in an isolated fire break. Apparently no emergency. Ranger reports the landing. Ranger turns up dead. Plane turns up deserted. Whoever set the plane down had a good reason. Didn't want to share his secret with the Ranger. On the other hand, it might be something real simple. Engine trouble. Barney, the Ranger didn't die of engine trouble. Let me have the map. Hello, Edwards. Good morning. See anything around? No. You? No. Can't have gotten very far in this short space of time. Tell me, what have we got around here besides wilderness? Well, over here is the Ridgeway Resort Hotel. Open now? Yeah. It's a good 15-mile hike. Uphill all the way, and if Mrs. Barlow is supposed to be with him... I will forget it. What are these mono cabins? The boys covering the highway are going to check it. But what's this? Eccles Corner. About a mile and a half east of here, out in the open. It caters to hunters during the season. 
It closed down about a week ago. Nobody left there now. Anybody covering it? Not yet. All right, Varney, you and I will get over there. Ed, would you stay with the plane? Get a print man out here to check the jeep. All right. Yeah, hold it. Well, is this it? No, we're almost there. What's the matter? Just want to make sure we don't run into anybody. So what? We looked apart. Campers, that's all. Yeah. Is it much farther? According to the map, only a quarter of a mile. Well, let's go, Steve. Okay. Just want to be careful, Mr. Barlow, that's all. There's nothing to worry about. We're doing everything right. Come on. Check that building over there. I'll check this one. Everything's locked up. No sign of anybody. It's the same here. Let's take a look around the side. Be it. You sure? Yeah. We're way ahead of time. Isn't there some way we can let them know we're here? I don't know, Mrs. Barlow. Maybe if I scout around a little. Wait! Wait for what? What is it, Steve? All right, Barney, come here. Steve Weston, Mr. and Mrs. Harry Barlow. I'm Matthews, Highway Patrol. All right, search him. All right, turn around. You on the left. Step forward and throw your pack on the ground. Get those hands back up. Step back. You on the right. Same thing. They're clean. Put your hands down and turn around. What do you want with us? You were on that plane, weren't you? Yeah. Our guides. We were supposed to meet our guides. Did you see a ranger when you landed? No, we didn't see a ranger. We didn't see anybody. There was a ranger found dead near your plane. I want to know everything you've done since you've landed. Well, we got out of the plane. What else? Then what? We started hiking. We hiked from the plane to here. Yeah, that's right. That's exactly what we did. There's been a killing. The time and place fit in with the landing of your plane. We don't know anything about that. Harry's right. We're meeting our guides. Guides for what? You're not carrying any guns. I'd like to take a look at those facts. May I? There's nothing in there, just some personal stuff. I said, may I? Barney. What do you want with us? We haven't done anything. It's pretty risky landing that plane where you did. I don't think you'll take the chance of splattering yourself all over the countryside just to come up here and toast marshmallows. We're camping. There's no law against it, is there? Oh, but there's a law against murder, and the man who saw your land is dead. What's in this bag? Nothing, just personal stuff. Yeah, it's real personal. It's locked. Let me have the key. I don't have it. I'm not gonna let a little thing like a key stop me. Give it to me. Here.
That's mine, every dime of it. Call my bank, they'll tell you. Call them, Mr. Matthews. Once we can prove the money's ours, you'll let us go, won't you? It's an awful lot of money to take on a camping trip. How much is it, about a hundred grand? Look, I'll level with you. I was in a little deal with a couple of partners. I double-crossed them. Brought the money up here to bury it. That's the truth. Isn't that the truth? Yes, Mr. Matthews, I swear it. That's what Mr. Barlow told me when we took off. He told me he was going to bury the money somewhere out here. Barney, open the other pack. You look like a sensible woman, Mrs. Barlow. What's your part in this expedition? What's the money for? What's it buying? She doesn't know a thing about this. Not a thing. What's in the pack? Nothing. Just some clothes and things. Those are mine. My clothes. Prescription made out to Virginia Barlow. Is that your daughter? Yeah. She's up here camping with some friends. She catches cold easy, so we thought we'd... So you're going to try and tell me you land a plane in a fire break, kill a ranger just to bring your daughter some cough syrup, huh? You don't think I believe that, do you? Harry, please, tell him. He'll help us. How can he help us? He's a... Go on, say it, Barlow. I'm a cop. The only reason a cop can't help you is because you're starting trouble or you're under a threat. Now, what's the hundred grand for? Ransom for your daughter? Come on, talk! They're to meet us here at noon. If everything goes all right, we'll get Ginny back. But they told us what would happen if we brought the cops in. You know what that means, Matthews. If they see cops around here, they'll... they'll kill my daughter. What's the whole story, Barlow? Ginny's just been home from the sanitarium for a few weeks. She's been pretty sick. She's been studying art. She likes to paint. You know, landscapes and all. She went for a walk yesterday to do some sketching. We got a phone call an hour later. We'd get her back safe and sound if, if we obeyed instructions. That meant keeping our mouths shut, staying away from the cops, a hundred grand in ransom money. They gave me instructions to come by plane, land in that fire break clearing, and meet them at 12 o'clock here. It's a tricky place to put down a plane. That many pilots could do it. Well, we're lucky to have Steve. You got any idea who's behind this? I've got enemies, sure. They'd rob me blind if they could. But they wouldn't try to get at me through my daughter. I don't know anybody like that. Please, Mr. Matthews, let us get Ginny back. Call your men off. You give me this break, Matthews. I swear I'll stand still for anything you want to do to me afterwards. It's 11 o'clock. We've got one hour if they're on the level. I want you people to stay out here in the open. You're not to leave the clearing. Do you understand? Yes, of course. All right, here. Better wrap up that money bottle. Come on, Barney. You think they're on a the level? If it was Barlow alone, I wouldn't be too sure. But his wife's face, that told me plenty. Like what? Like we better find Virginia Barlow fast. <laughs> formulated a plan by placing their available men at vantage points nearby and undercover. While they waited, the Barlows waited too, anxiously hoping their meeting would result in their daughter's safe return. It's all set up. We got men watching that clearing from every angle. I don't even think you could spot them through the glasses. Well, it's six minutes before 12. These last few minutes must be pretty rough on Mrs. Barlow. What time is it? At five, I've... Oh, please. Dear Lord, please. What'd you say, dear? Nothing. Nothing. Listen, honey. You know how you always say you'd give anything in the world if I'd clear out of this racket? I will. I swear it. If we get Jenny back, I'm pulling out right away. We're going to get her back, aren't we, Harry? We are, aren't we? Sure we are. Don't worry. 
just a few minutes more now. You know what? I'll bet the first thing she wants to do is set up an easel and paint a picture of these hills. Easy, honey. Easy. We just got to sweat it out. It's almost 12. Who's got in the plane, Barney? Edwards and Zillings. Good. Who's ever holding the Barlow girl's gonna head straight for the plane. It's the fastest and most logical way to get out of here, and nothing's gonna stop him either. Yeah. The Ranger found that out. Poor guy. It's 12 o'clock straight up. Do you think they may have spotted us while we were down there? Yeah, it's possible. It's very possible. What time is it now? A couple of minutes more. You said that before. Oh, it's after the time. They're not coming. My watch is fast. We have the money. Let Jenny go, please. Jenny! No, Mrs. Boyle, no. Ellen, Ellen, oh. baby. <laughs> You're okay. Told you there wouldn't be any trouble, honey. Just hold still now. Why, that's Cooper, our gardener, and his wife. What's the matter, Barlow? You look a little surprised. Didn't you think we'd keep our word? I never thought you'd do anything like this, Cooper. The trouble with you, Barlow, is you trust the wrong people. A man in the racket shouldn't trust anyone, especially the people who work for him. How about it, pilot? You should know. You work for him, too. You ought to be strung up by your thumbs for this, Cooper. Yeah, it's kind of strange the way Barlow's acting. Seems to know those two. Know them? Yeah, he and his wife looked awful surprised when they saw who had their daughter. Well, that's a nice way to celebrate our home week. Let's wait. We'll let them make the first move. Here's the money. A hundred thousand. It's all in here. We did everything just like you say. Please, Stay back, me. Mrs. Barlow. Just throw it at my feet, Mr. Barlow. Let me go. Let me go. Relax, kid. I'll tell you when. Easy, Jenny. Take it easy. Please, honey, don't spoil it now. The money's all there. Every penny of it. All we want is Jenny. Please, let her go. She isn't well. She... I'm sorry, Mrs. Barlow. Plans have changed. I'm gonna have to keep the girl for a while yet. Why? We kept our promise. You said... Kept your promise? Kept your promise? What are those cops doing around here? We didn't have anything to do with them. Cut it out, Barlow. They're not here for the fresh air. I swear we didn't bring them here, Mr. Cooper. They came to investigate the plane. You know me well enough to know I wouldn't lie to you. Please, let Jenny go. Stop fretting, Mrs. Barlow. We're not going to hurt her one bit. We've been good to you, haven't we, honey? Oh, let go. Let go of me. Wait, Jenny, wait. It'll be all right. Let us handle it. That makes sense, Barlow. Ready, Barney, we may have to move fast. Where are the cops now, Barlow? They left. They didn't know anything about this. Hold it, Cooper. Tell the truth, Barlow. Where are those cops now? You wouldn't shoot that girl, Cooper. You wouldn't dare. Oh, no? What makes you think I owe Barlow anything? You wouldn't shoot that kid because she's too useful to you. She's your free ticket out of here. Without her, you're a dead duck, and you know it. Hold it, pilot. No funny stuff. In the name of heaven, Cooper, give us our daughter, please. Not now, Barlow. Later. We'll take good care of her. We just want to keep her with us till we get to the highway. After all, we took care of her all this time. Now it's her turn to take care of us. Please. Well, they're sure doing a lot of gabbing down there. They haven't let the girl go yet, either. If they'd only separate long enough. You still think they'll head for the plane? They specified a plane on their orders, and that wasn't to make Barlow more comfortable. Yeah, but the Barlows have the pilot. Yeah, I know. What are you gonna do, Clipper, when you get to the highway? We got a car waiting for us. We'll leave the kid. If we make it to the highway okay, she won't be hurt. Look, you can have my rings. They're worth a lot of money. We can raise more. Only leave Jimmy with us. Please. Please. That doesn't make sense, Cooper. 
for a guy who could pull a job as smart as this, it just doesn't make sense. Maybe not to you, friend, but I figure it makes pretty good sense for us. It's at least five miles to the highway. You couldn't make it with a girl. She's sick. She's only been out of the hospital a couple of weeks. She couldn't stand that hike. What are you angling for, pilot? You better stick to gardening cover. You're better at it. You know what you did wrong? You picked the wrong victim. Next time, make sure the victim can double as a hostage. The one you got is all wrong for the job. He's right, Eddie. You know, he's right. Shut up. What'll we do, Eddie? We can't just stay here. I told you to shut up. Tell you what I'll do, Cooper. I'll make a deal with you. You leave the girl here and use me as a hostage. Steve. I mean it. Trade the girl for me. I'll take you back to the plane and we can be in the air in 30 minutes. I'll take you any place you want to go. This way, no excess baggage and you still have me for a hostage. How do I know you won't crack up the plane? And kill myself? I'm no hero. All I want to do is get Barlow's girl in the clear and then I'll take you any place you want. I'll get a bonus from Mr. Barlow for this, I'm sure of it. You're darn right. Well, how about it? Okay, pilot. Put your hands over your head. Hey, get over here. Oh, okay, pilot. Let's march. They're taking the pilot as hostage. They're gonna head back for the plane. Have our men surround the fire break. Tell Edwards to put the plane out of commission just in case. Meet me down around to talk to Barlow. Take these with you. What is this, Matthews? Are you crazy? You're putting Steve in a bad spot. Oh, I haven't got much time, so talk fast. When the plane landed, who got out first? The pilot got out before you and your wife? What? Come on, speak up. Who got out first? Why, Steve did. He told us to wait while he took a look around. But it was only a few minutes. Come on, let's go, Barney. All right, hold it. Drop that gun. Don't come any closer, cop, or this guy gets it. I mean it. One more step and he gets a slug in the back. Okay, pull the trigger. Wait, Mr. Matthews. Stay back. This guy's desperate. Let's see how desperate he really is. Matthews, cut it out. He'll kill me. Well, what's he waiting for? You've played your part real well, but you don't ad-lib so good. What? what are you talking about? Figure it out. When you and the Barlow saw me, they didn't know me from Adam. I could have been there to collect a ransom, but you knew different. You were surprised. You were the one who told them to stay back, remember? I don't get it. Look, this guy's desperate. I noticed the Barlow's reaction when they saw who was holding their daughter. They were surprised, and you weren't. The hostage gag was a good one, too. And the plane was part of the plan, and every plane needs a pilot. Now, if your buddy's still so anxious to pull the trigger, let him go ahead before my men start shooting, because you're going to get it for killing the Ranger anyway. Killing the Ranger? Eddie! Eddie, for Pete's sake, throw your gun away! All right, put your hands behind your heads. Walk this way. Well, how'd you figure that one out? I went to the patrol academy, remember? Patrol story next week is a very unusual one. We hope you'll be with us. Until then, remember the clowns at the circus, they're real funny. But on the highway, they're murder. This is Roderick Crawford saying, see you next week.
Whenever the laws of any state are broken, a duly authorized organization swings into action. It may be called the state police, state troopers, militia, the rangers, or the highway patrol. These are the stories of the men whose training, skill, and courage have enforced and preserved our state laws. dangerous and unpredictable criminals with which law enforcement agencies must contend is the arsonist. His senseless and destructive crimes result in a staggering loss of life, property, and national resources. On August 15th, the Highway Patrol was asked to cooperate in an effort to apprehend a dangerous arsonist. The fire is positively of incendiary origin. Start on the receiving dock, which sets on a concrete foundation about 11 inches from the earth. Here's a sample of earth we dug from under the platform. Smell it. Gasoline. Yeah. There's nothing but a rough board floor in the receiving dock. And some of the inflammable leaked through and dropped onto the earth under the platform. The inflammable that leaked into the ground doesn't burn and actually tells us many things about the arsonist. Oh, what things? Well, an arsonist has an M.O. same as any other criminal. Yeah, we know that. Well, by finding out where a fire started and how it started, we can usually tell who might have started it. Well, you got any clues on this one? Yeah, it could have been one of several known arsonists. The inflammable was apparently poured in a good-sized circle, just about the distance it could be covered with five gallons of liquid fuel. Now, I can give you the names of several people in this part of the state who have been arrested and convicted of setting a fire in just this manner. All right, let's have them. Take them down, Kent. One man is about 50, married and has four children. His name is Gerald Harter. H-A-R-T-E-R? -R? Right. Then there's Jod Patterson. He was caught in the act of setting this type of fire by a watchman. Jod Patterson? Another is Shakes McDowell, but he may still be in prison. You'll have to check. Right, we need everything we can get on these guys. Now check with the office. They'll fill you in. Thanks very much. Come on, Ken. Let's go. Twenty-one fifty to headquarters. Headquarters, by. Contact Arson Division, Fire Department. Give me a rundown on the following suspects. Gerald Harder, Gerard Patterson, Jakes McDowell. Any other suspects with the same M.O.? 10-4? 10-4. Here you are, kid.
Matthews. I'm looking for Mr. Harder. I'm Harder. And I'm Matthews, Highway Patrol. This is Sergeant Williams. Yes, Mr. Matthews. I suppose you know there was a hundred thousand dollar fire at the annex this morning. Fire? It's a terrible thing. Where were you this morning, Mr. Harder? I understand why you came here to talk with me. Seems back in my distant past someplace, I got all mixed up with things like starting fires. Or maybe it would be good to say I'm just mixed up. Well, that's not quite the answer we need, Mr. Harder. The question is, where were you this morning? I was home, Sergeant. Left there before I came to work. As a matter of fact, I was a few minutes late. First time since I've been on this job. Tell me something. Anybody else vouch for this outside of your family? As a matter of fact, yes. My wife and I have been taking care of my son's baby. About 6 o'clock this morning, he picked up a right sharp coffin spell. I suppose you sent for the doctor. Sure did. And he took care of the youngster okay, but he didn't leave until after 8 o'clock. I was with him every minute. He had breakfast with us. Well, check that, Ken. What's your phone number? Main 468. For. Shepherd's Corner. You going there? About uh, two miles this side. Want to go that far? Oh, you bet. My thumb's about worn out. I suppose every grandfather talks like this, but that kid is sure cute. Sure had me scared this morning. You got any grandchildren, Mr. Matthews? Well, you see, uh... It all checks out. Mrs. Harder, the baby, and the doctor. Well, that's all we need, Mr. Harder. Thanks very much. Don't mention it. Mr. Matthews. What? If somebody did set that fire, I sure hope you get them. So do a lot of other people. You know, this is one time I'm kind of glad the suspect had a substantial alibi. Yeah, I know what you mean. Who's next on the list? Judd Patterson, 224 Myrtle Street. What are we waiting for? Mr. Norpel. Hi, Ray. Fill it up? Yeah. Got family in Shepherd's Corner? No. Guy I knew in the service lives there. At least I hope he does. Where are you from? I just got out of the service myself. Uh, been here and there, wherever the commander general thought I was needed most. No family? Uh, I got a sister somewhere, but we don't get along. My mother died when I was four years old. My dad passed on when I was in the service. So... Mrs. Patterson. When did you see your son last? Yesterday, at noon, he was home for lunch. Mr. Matthews, you don't think Jod set that awful fire, do Tell you? Tell me, does he do this very often? Does he stay out all night and part of the next day? No, he doesn't. Do you have any idea where he might be now? He said he might go up north and try to find work. He, he hasn't been able to get work around here since... Well, since he was released from that institution about four months ago. I I'm sure Jod had nothing to do with that fire. I don't think it would be fair to blame that fire on Mrs. Jod. Mrs. Patterson, we didn't say he started it. We just want to be sure he didn't. I know. You're doing what you think is right. As soon as he comes back, I'll let you know. Do you have a recent picture of your son we might use, Mrs. Patterson? Yes, I I'll get it for you. Can you wait for the picture? I'll get things moving. This is Jod. I I'm sure that you'll find that he didn't set that fire. Oh, yes, ma'am. Thank you. APP on Jod Patterson. Arson suspect. I want to stake out at Patterson's house, 224 Myrtle Street. Have another unit check third suspect. Shakes McDowell. We'll case this neighborhood. 10-4? 10-4. Looks like I'm on my own. As long as Uncle Sam didn't feed me anymore, I got to get a job. You know where I can find one? I might. What's your name? Arthur Benson. Ever work on a farm? No. After that stretch in the army, it doesn't sound hard to learn. I got a guy for a few days, bailing alfalfa. Well, that is, he'll start bailing as soon as I get this fan belt home. 
We could do with a little more help right now. Sounds good. Is that all, Mr. Nopel? Just put it in the account? Yeah, thanks a lot, Ray. Anytime. Thirty-four ten to twenty-one fifty. Twenty-one fifty by. I just located the stolen car on this morning's hot sheet. I found evidence of an inflammable in the trunk. Watch your ten twenty. Linden Road off Highway eighty-one, twelve miles from Shepherd's Corner. Send me a tow car and I'll bring it in. Ten four. We're on our way. Ten four. Gasoline odor is real faint now, but when I opened up the trunk, it was real strong. Look, here's some marks. Could have been a five-gallon can. He must have thrown it away somewhere between the fire and here. Well, we got an abandoned car, a missing arsonist, a five-gallon can, and a warehouse fire. What's the total? Chad Patterson, or at least his M.O. Well, one thing's for sure, he's a suspect. Figuring the time it must have taken him to get here and ditch the car, he can't be too far away. Well, he might have hitchhiked a ride with somebody. Yeah, unless he did have another car stash somewhere. You think he'd figure things that far ahead? I'll take it easy. These guys are pretty smart. They put up a good front. Good enough to fool the average citizen. Well, if he does have another car, that roadblock should pick him up. Yeah. Well, come on, let's go. Yes, Frank, I know. Clyde is here now. I'll be right over. Goodbye. Hello, dear. Nora, this is Arthur Benson. Arthur, Mrs. Norpell. Hello, Arthur. Pleased to meet you, ma'am. Arthur's going to work for us for a while. Oh, good. We sure can use another man. Lucy's had another attack. Frank just called and wants me to come right over. Oh, go ahead. Take the pickup. Okay. Oh, be sure and hook up the outside bell. If we have to take you to the hospital, I'll call you. Is it that bad? It sounded like it. I'll let you know. Make yourself at home, Arthur. Thank you very much. Well, I'll go see what's in the ice box. Okay. Ten four. Well, that's a good alibi. And it narrows the search down to John Patterson if it's a local man. If he does have an alibi, we're right back where we started. We do most of our business in alfalfa. Why don't you take it easy? Look around and get acquainted with the place while I take this fan belt out to David. Okay. Oh, and watch the phone, will you? I'll be right back.
evidence that inflammables had been carried in the trunk of the stolen car was possibly the first break in the search for the arsonist. But a break that could well prove to be too late. a picture of a man we're trying to locate. wonder if you might have seen him. He could have been in a car. He might have been hitchhiking. No, I don't think so. It's been kind of busy here. This is very important. Take a good look. See if you can remember him. Well, I'll try now. Uh, there's been a lot of people in here today. I don't know. Now, now wait a minute. What? Yes, sir, that fellow was in today. Now, let me see. Who was he with? How long ago? Do you remember? Well, I couldn't rightly say. Tell me, was he alone? Or was he driving with somebody else or what? No, I'm trying to think. Uh, I got it. He came in with Clyde Norpel in Mr. Norpel's pickup truck, and I filled it up with gas, and they sat there and talked. Where does Norpel live? He lives on a farm about two miles this side of Shepherd's Corner. What's his phone number, you know? I think so. He's got a charge account here. Let's see. Norpel, uh, Citrus 412. Thanks. What did what he do? Well, we just want to question him. How long ago was that? How do you get to Norfolk's place? Well, see, you go straight ahead about uh, four miles. You come to a dirt road near an orange grove, and you make that turn, you'll be in Norfolk's place about two minutes. Thanks very much. All right. This is it. Well, we haven't traveled four miles yet. The service station guy said it was over four miles. Well, this fits the description of the turnoff, man. We gotta go ahead. Yeah, we'll try it. If we don't hit Norfolk twice in a couple of minutes, you call headquarters. Have another unit cover the other road.
Looks deserted. Check the barn. I'll take the house. Hold it! You hold it, mister. I know what you want. Well, you're not gonna get me. And you can't shoot either. Because if you do, I'll drop this in the hay and it's been soaked in gasoline and he'll be burned to a crisp. Well, what's your proposition? Get out of here. Get in your car and start going. You're out of sight before this burns out. I won't set fire to the barn. Well, that's all right with me, John. I'd just as soon get in my car and drive away. You don't mind if I ask you just one question, though. You better make it a short one. Well, how do I know you won't set fire to the barn as soon as I'm out of sight? Well, that's a chance you'll have to take, and you haven't got much longer to take it. Okay, okay, I'm going. Oh, uh, by the way, we saw your mother on the way out here. She had a message for you. It's a pretty important message. I think you ought to hear it. You see, she was worried when you didn't come home last night. Get out! Get out of here! <laughs> I guess so. He wanted to burn down the barn and me with it. Why? Well, I don't know. Maybe a doctor can come up with the right answer. See Highway Patrol again next week. Until then, remember, it isn't what you drive, but how you drive that counts. This is Roderick Crawford saying, see you next week. <laughs>